Hey guys, it's Mr. C here. Uh, today we're going to do some equilibrium tension problems. Um, done a lot of these in class uh, pertaining to Newton's first law. So really by the end of today, I want you to be able to say to yourself, I can utilize Newton's first law to find the tension in strings that are holding up a weight. So we're going to do lots of problems where strings are holding up weights or weights um, all at different angles. We can figure out how hard the strings have to actually pull to hold up the weights. So let's get right into it. A quick recall, I'm going to give you um, a, a little different version of Newton's first law that we use quite a bit in class that's useful for thinking about tension problems. And that is, if the net force acting on an object is zero, so if the sum of all the forces acting on an object is zero, then the object is in equilibrium. So the object is in equilibrium. There we go. And that word equilibrium, super, super important in physics, probably one of the most important vocabs that we're going to talk about this year. So I'm going to go ahead and define equilibrium so we can utilize it. Equilibrium means that the acceleration of the object is zero, which means one of two things. Either the object is standing still, i.e. it's not moving, or the object is moving at a constant velocity. Really important to use the word velocity for this because um, the object could be moving at a constant speed and there's still a force acting on it, but the force could be causing it to change its direction. So going back to that then, our, our Newton's first law, that says if the net force acting on an object in a direction is zero, that means the object is either standing still or it's moving at a constant velocity. And so in these tension problems, we have objects that are standing still, they're hanging. And so we're going to utilize the fact that because they're hanging, the net force in every direction has to add up to zero. So let's look at an example problem, um, a very general tension problem where a weight is being held up by two strings. And utilizing Newton's first law, we're going to solve for the tension in each string. So we're going to find T1 and T2, so that's tension 1 and tension 2, i.e. how hard each string is pulling up to hold up that weight. So. Um, above here, this is simply a wall or a ceiling that's holding up the weights. Um, the strings are considered to be massless, um, and the weight that's hanging has a mass mg. Note that the angle between the vertical and T1 is given by theta, and the angle between the vertical and T2 is given by phi. I'm going to call it for that angle. Okay, So let's, let's talk about Newton's first law. Because this system is in equilibrium, I know that the sum, so I'm going to use the Greek letter sigma for sum, the sum of the forces in the x direction has to add up to zero, and the sum of the forces in the y direction has to add up to zero, meaning all the horizontal forces have to cancel out, and all the vertical forces have to cancel out. So now our goal is identifying the vertical and horizontal f forces, because note that T1 is pulling at an angle, and T2 is pulling at an angle, so it, it contributes both horizontal and vertical forces. So the first force is simply the weight itself. The force of gravity uh, acts on the weight, and so it pulls it down uh, in the vertical direction with a force of mg. So that's one force in the vertical direction. Let's examine T1. T1 is pulling up and to the left, so I'm going to use uh, the red marker for this. So there is a vertical contribution, so, and there is a horizontal contribution. We can find expressions for those in terms of theta, just break it up into a trig triangle. So I'll draw that over here. If this is T1, this is theta. The vertical side is going to be the adjacent side to the angle. So this is going to be T1 times the cosine of the angle for um, the angle that's provided in this problem. And then the opposite side is going to be T1 times the sine of the angle. And so that's the expressions for the horizontal component and the vertical component. Okay. Similarly, T2 has a vertical and horizontal contribution. So I'll draw that in blue. So the vertical contribution is given there. And here is my horizontal contribution. I'll once again make a trig triangle um, so we can identify what those forces are. I'm just going to go ahead and group this first um, to get it all together. So T2. It's going up and over. We have the angle phi. 
So the vertical contribution is going to be given by t2 times the cosine of phi. And then the vertical, or I'm sorry, the horizontal contribution is going to be given by t2 times the sine of phi. And there we go. There's expressions for the vertical and horizontal uh, contributions. So now our goal is we just simply find all the vertical and all the horizontal. Okay? So first we'll do the horizontal. In the horizontal direction, if we look at all everything we've drawn here, the only horizontal forces that are happening are the horizontal contribution of T1 and the horizontal contribution of T2 pulling to the left and to the right. Uh, what that means then is because they're the only forces, and because we already said the system's in equilibrium, the forces have to add up to zero, that means, simply, I've got to remember my expression, it was sine, okay? Uh, T1 sine theta plus T2 two sine of phi have to add up to zero. Uh, Rewriting it because they're in opposite directions. You can just say simply that uh, T1 sine theta equals T2 sine phi. And there's our first expression. I'm going to put a box around that and say that's expression number one that we care about. Now we're going to look at the vertical direction. And for this, I'm going to circle everything in green that's vertical. So we have the vertical co contribution of T1 we have the vertical contribution of T2 and the downwards contribution uh, of weight. And all three of those have to add up to zero. Or in other words, T1 cosine theta plus T2 cosine phi minus mg equals zero. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, solve it in terms of mg, so I'm going to put the mg on the other side. So in other words, T1 cos theta plus T2 cos phi equals mg. And there's our second equation. Now, if you look at this problem, um, most problems in physics, you're either given, uh, you're given the angles, so uh, theta and phi. And so really, this boils down to the fact that you have two equations and two unknowns. And so typically, the steps you take at this point is you'd utilize equation one, and you'd solve for either T1 or T2. In this case, I'm going to solve for T1. Or in other words, I'm going to say T1 equals T2 times sine of phi divided by sine of theta. And then, because I have an expression for T1, wherever I see a T1, I can go ahead. Let me extend the page just a little bit more in the middle. Wherever I see a T1, I can insert it into the equation. What that does is it gives me one equation now with one variable, and it allows me, um, using a, a few steps of algebra, to then isolate and solve for T2. Once T2 is known, I can go back to any one of these two equations and then resolve for T1, and the problem is solved for. Really, though, the physics is, think about Newton's law. Think about the fact that in every direction, all the forces in the horizontal direction have to uh, cancel out and add up to zero. All the forces in the, in the vertical direction have to cancel out and add up to zero. So your goal with any tension problem, then, is simply identify every force in the horizontal direction, every force in the vertical direction, kind of um, make a table or draw pictures, and then just, again, add them up. Well, I hope this helps you out. Um, we'll probably do some more specific problems in the future. Best of luck.